Anheuser-Busch, the company that makes Bud Light, has lost $37 billion in value since hiring a trans activist, Dylan Mulvaney, to represent their brand. Why did this happen? How can you avoid this branding mistake in your business? And as I normally do on this channel, I am going to give an alternative pitch, what I would have done to sell more Budweiser rather than hiring a trans activist for a brand that's mainly consumed by uh, men wearing camo pants. So here's the deal. What people don't realize and what mistakes are made at the high, high, high corporate level is that a brand is everything. You have sales, you have marketing, et cetera, but these are just the tactics. These are just the, the little nuts and bolts of the bigger machine, which is your brand. What a brand is, is it's something that clearly stands for something and stands against something. And the product you offer is the thing that allows people to support you because they believe in you. They believe in what you stand for and they bond with you over what you stand against. Now, throughout the years, Budweiser has been a very masculine brand. It's been a brand about men coming together and bonding over a Budweiser. That is what it's been about. Now, every beer company has not had that same exact brand. High Life, Miller High Life, uh, the champagne of beer, that's a different type of brand. It's like, hey, you can have a high-class drink, but in a beer. There's different ways to brand your products. But for Budweiser, what I have seen from this company has always been men coming together, sharing a Bud. This Bud's for you, right? men bonding over the commonality that make men men. Look, you don't have to support the trans, not support the whatever, to understand what a brand is. When you have someone come in who, let's face facts, is not masculine. There's nothing masculine about Dylan Mulvaney. Nothing. There's nothing that is bonding between the current audience that Budweiser has and not just a trans person, but a trans activist. Like, this is the exact opposite of what most of their customers believe in, period. They're not drinking, like, foo-foo drinks and magic flamingo f dust in a martini glass. They're drinking Budweiser. The thing you have to understand is that most companies, not just Budweiser, but most small businesses, when they want to scale, when they want to improve sales, they tend to do this thing where they go wide, right? And sometimes, sometimes it works. But what's a lot easier is to go deep. Now, here's what I mean. Budweiser tried to, or Anheuser-Busch, tried to sell Budweiser to new people who previously had not drank it. Think about this. They bring a trans activist on. Who follows Dylan Mulvaney and what type of drinks do they consume? Well, I lived in downtown St. Pete for four years, which is literally the gayest city in Florida. They literally have a gay welcome center. Yes, you can go to a welcome center if you're gay and be welcomed. Like there's a whole building with bricks and a roof and plumbing system dedicated if you just happen to be gay, you get a welcome center. So the point I'm making is there's a lot of that stuff going on there. And I will tell you, of every friend I have, of every friend of a friend I've ever had, I don't know too many people who are trans, who support trans, who are ultra liberal, et cetera, et cetera, who sit around drinking a Budweiser. They are at craft bars. They are drinking foo-foo drinks, as my father would call them. If they are drinking beer, they're drinking craft beer, like Angry Orchard. You know, they're just chugging a whole bottle of sugar. That's what they drink. So for you to say, hey, just because we brought somebody on who's trans and is a trans activist and has a Budweiser, all of a sudden you're going to stop drinking what you've been drinking, and now you're going to drink this other thing that you don't like, is insane. There's, there's no way that's going to work. It's just not going to work. It's just going to piss off the people who are already drinking Bud Light. And so that is an example of going wide, trying to get new customers outside instead of going deep. Here's what I would have done. This is how I'd have gone deep. Being a father is about moments. The moment you welcome your son into the world. The moment you watch him take his first steps. The moment you teach him to ride a bike. The moment you teach him to drive. The moment you watch him graduate from high school and the moment you send him off to college. And then, there's the most special moment of all. The moment you share his first bud. Cherish these moments while they last. 
This button's for both of you. Now, that's what I would have done. Why? Because think about it. Every day, there is a father who drinks Bud Light who has a son who turns 21 every single day. Some fathers may not even think to say, hey son, now you're 21, let's have a bud. Why? Because maybe their kid is busy partying with their friends or they're going here, they're going there for their birthday, they just don't think about it, ah, whatever. But then they see a commercial on TV and they remember when the kid rode his first bike. They remember when he was born, they remember when he graduated high school, when he learned to drive, they remember all these moments it makes them think, wow, like those were good moments. I'm getting older. I want more of those moments with my son. And then in the commercial, and the moment you share your first bud, wow, I would really like to share a beer with my son. Picks up the phone, knocks on the door, sends him a text. Hey, son, I know you're turning 21. Can we get together? I'd love to have a beer with you. Let's have our first beer. That, mo that thing that they did not remember, because most, most mass advertising is about awareness. It's about awareness, okay? McDonald's, like, everybody knows what McDonald's is, but if you're driving down the road and you see a McDonald's radio ad or right before you left you saw a McDonald's ad, you think, oh, oh yeah, McDonald's, oh, I could use a burger, and you go buy it. That's why they spend money on advertising. Most mass advertising for established brand is for retention. So now this 21-year-old who maybe would have never thought to drink a Budweiser now meets with his dad, has a Bud Light, talks with his dad, has that male bonding moment, and goes, oh, right? And now it becomes a thing. And next thing you know, that bonding moment now becomes a thing where maybe that kid decides that he's going to drink Bud like his dad. And next thing you know, he's going out. He's hanging out with his friends who fathers also drank, but next thing you know, when he has a kid, da 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 and it snowballs. That's what happens with mass advertising. You introduce a concept, you remind people, and it snowballs. Now, the reason that's going deep is because it's going after the people who already drink Bud, and it's encouraging them to pass that culture on to their kids. Now, I want to be clear. I don't advise this at all. I do not think you should tell your kids to drink. I don't think you should drink. It's just not something I'm a fan of. However, if you gave me the choice between saying, hey, here's this brand where traditionally men who identify as blue collar, masculine, conservative men have drank this drink, let's have a trans activist market to them or let's do an ad encouraging them to pass that culture down to their sons. I don't know. Which one do you think would be better? Okay? Think about that. So that's what I would have personally done, and here's how you can avoid this mistake in your business. Once you establish a brand, once you establish what you stand for and what you stand against, it doesn't really matter what your product is because your product is going to be purchased by a lot of different people. There's a lot of beers. There's a lot of consultants. There's a lot of courses on how to do XYZ. There's a lot of e-commerce products. People have choices. People don't really buy things because they like that thing over that thing. They buy things because they like that brand over that brand. Why do you think people will spend absorbent amounts of money to get a name on a bag, a bag that'll do just as good of a job as another bag with a different name that's one-tenth the price? Why? Because they want the name. So if you're a consultant, if you have an e-commerce store, if you're a coach, if you sell a service, if somebody believes in what you stand for and they believe in what you stand against and they, they oppose that same thing, they are now aligned with you. They are now bonded to you. They are now a believer and a follower and a fan of your brand. And so when you have that thing that they could buy that other people have, they're going to choose you because they like your brand, even though they could buy it from anybody. That's how branding works. Don't establish a brand, what you stand for, what you stand against, and then go in the complete opposite direction to try to get more customers. Why? Because that's incredibly stupid, and it should be obvious, but most people, even at the highest level, are so dumb in the moment. And look, I've made dumb mistakes too, but how dumb is it for decades Conservative blue-collar men in camo pants have drank Bud Light. Let's hire a trans person to represent. Like, dumb. Just dumb. Whether you believe in or you believe against, it's just... And I would say the same thing for a brand that was aligned with the liberal, more liberal side 
bringing friggin' somebody from Duck Dynasty in to it would still be stupid. Okay, so once you establish a brand, the biggest thing you can do is stay on brand because if you go off brand, you effectively reset everything. You lose your customers, and now you have to rebuild from the ground up. And if the corporate bigwigs, the one percenters at Anheuser Busch, can't rebuild because they're screwed, like they have not been able to recover. Imagine how easy it would be for you to recover in your business if these big, smart one percenters can't do it. Do not make the mistake of going off brand. I have gone off brand before, slightly, not that bad, and it has cost me a lot of money. I will do my very best not to make that mistake again, and I, I hope and pray you don't make that mistake either. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you in the next one.